Yo, what's happening, family? It's your chill brother from another. Getting you in that groove. Getting you in that rhythm, right? Dropping you everything you need for the Playbook Podcast. And on this episode of the Playbook Podcast, we have a special edition. Because it's Mother's Day. And every day, honestly, should be Mother's Day. We got to a, a, a send a special shout out to all those beautiful mothers out there that have been handling their biz for a long time, taking care of your family, taking care of your kids, taking care of your loved ones. We salute, honor, and respect you for what you've done and how you make all of us better based on what you do for us on a daily. We salute every mother right here on the Playbook Podcast. So go ahead, prop your feet up. We didn't already showered you with love. So go ahead, let's go ahead and shower you with some things around the sports world on this evening, right, for Mother's Day. So around the NBA, we got around the NFL and around college basketball. As always, continue to follow the script, which is the Playbook Podcast on Spotify, Google Podcast, Anchor, Spreaker, and other uh, podcast platforms to continue to give you what you need as we expand our horizons right here on the Playbook Podcast. So around the NBA, you know we got to have the opening tip as always, right? We got panic time in LA. The Lakers look prime for the play in tourney. We got, I got to talk about LeBron's fraudulence in regards to his comments that he's made about the play the play in tournament. He had a lot of different stuff to talk about in regards to the playing tournament last season compared to this season. I talk about that on today. I call him out on his stuff. We got the coach of the year, my top five list of coach of the year candidates as well. We got potential breakout stars in the playoffs. I'm going to talk about a couple of guys that I feel like are prime for a big showing in the playoffs in about two weeks. I'm going to talk about that as well. Around the NFL, we got to move the chains. The Broncos are looking to land Mr. Rogers. The Broncos are looking to get Aaron Rodgers away from Green Bay. They're monitoring the situation. And it almost seems like Denver is a place for uh, older quarterbacks to try to resurrect what is left out of their career to win a championship. I mean, Peyton did it. So maybe Aaron can do it. You know? Something to look out for. Especially with the AFC West. Oh my gosh. Aaron Rodgers. Justin Herbert. David Carr and Patrick Mahomes all in the same division? Woo! Man, I'm telling you, that would be some must-see TV out west. Also, Jalen Hurts ready to bring the Hurt business to the city of brotherly love. Jalen Hurts putting in that work in the all-season with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, He's been working with the quarterback coach that helped uh, Patrick Mahomes improve his game. So Jalen Hurts... Stock is ascending. We'll see what happens this upcoming season with Jalen Hurts. Also, splash or crash? Rookies that will make an immediate splash and those that might crash and burn. We're going to talk about that as well around the NFL. Around college basketball, we're going to give you some news and rumors what's been going on around the college basketball landscape. I got the trivia question of the day, and I got the championship speech to get your mind right for the week that's to come. All right? So go ahead. Prop your feet up. Get yourself together. You know, get yourself all nice and cozy. It's another edition of the Playbook Podcast. Let's go. My good people, my good people, my good people. Once again, it's your chill brother from another. Getting you ready, getting you set, and let's go for another edition of the Playbook Podcast. Y'all know what to do. No need to quit. Y'all follow the script. Continue to follow us again on Google Podcasts, on Anchor, on Spreaker, on Spotify, and other podcast platforms to continue to give you what you need. We bring the barbershop and put it in the podcast form, right? It's a busy world that we got going on. So while you out doing your thing, go ahead and pop in the Playbook Podcast and continue to listen to your chill brother from another that give you all the info that you need from around the NBA, NFL, and college basketball. Listen, I, I just again want to send a special shout out to my mother, my beautiful mother, Miss Pamela Eileen Turner Harris, and my mother in love, Mom Rose. Love you guys both with everything in my being. Thank you for being who you are in my life, and I will continue to do everything I can 
to shower you guys with love. Listen, without further ado, no more fluff. Let's get right into the opening tip. So with the opening tip, y'all, we go around the NBA, around the association. And right now, the Lakers, y'all need to be in panic mode. Real talk. Y'all are in straight panic mode. All y'all Lakers fans, y'all need to be biting y'all nails. Y'all need to be uh, looking for a place to hide like the ostrich, stick their head in the sand. Listen, y'all should be exactly like that right now because y'all are in jeopardy of getting knocked out in the play-in tournament. The play-in tournament, not the playoffs. Not talking about playoffs, as Jim Moore said back in 99. We're talking about the play-in tournament. That's how much garbage the Lakers are right now. Without LeBron James, they have lost considerable ground in the West. They no longer hold any type of advantage over the teams like the Portland Trailblazers or the Dallas Mavericks, who hold the 5th and 6th seed, respectively. LA's in 7th. We got Memphis in 8th. Golden State in nine. And San Antonio holding the 10th spot in the Western Conference. Listen, man, the way these Lakers are playing, they could get knocked out by any one of these teams right now. LeBron's still out. AD's finding his way. And these Lakers, listen, I'm pretty sure right now they're looking to bring back Rondo. They're really bringing, ready to bring back JaVale McGee. They're ready to bring back Dwight Howard probably as well because they are getting smoked on every end of the court. Kyle Kuzma is a a, a, a jack-in-the-box. Whenever he feels like showing up, he shows up right now. He's a disappearing act at best, really, for the Lakers. They really need to find out where's Waldo when it comes to him. He changes his hairstyle more often than he really changes his game right now. That's what I'm, I'm seeing out of Kyle Kuzma. The inconsistency out of him, really, I'm sorry. Kyle Kuzma needs a change of address. I'm just going to say that right now. I really feel like the Lakers need to go ahead and trade him this all season. Taylor Horton Tucker, that young brother, he get down. He's hurting right now. He's got a couple of injuries. But I think the Lakers need to explore getting rid of Kyle Kuzma. I'm sorry to say that. I, I, I know he got the same name as me. But Kyle, you ain't playing like a Kyle in my book. You're not. Seriously. But I also got to talk about the fraudulence that is with King James. King James last season for the Lakers, he was all for the playing tournament. Oh, it's a nice creative way to get teams like the Sacramento's, the New Orleans, uh, and the Memphis at the time a chance to try to play their way in to the playoffs. Now, in this season, he's like, who came up with this dumb idea? For lack of a better word. Right? That's, that's a little odd to me, Mr. LeBron James. Because last season, you guys hold the number one spot in the West. And everything is good. And you're all for creativity and different ways to, to garner interest into the NBA product. But this season, because y'all losing and y'all not, y'all not doing what you would like. So now that's a bad idea with the playing tournament. Get your story straight, LeBron. Stick with your story. If you say one season that it's a great idea, don't be trying to change it up just because y'all losing now. Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot who I'm talking about. It's Mr. Crybaby. Crybaby James, not King James. I know some of y'all put him on a mantle. I respect his game. But all this crying and whining, I, I can't get with it. So, Lakers, y'all need to get y'all act together and get y'all act together quick. Speaking of different teams... That don't make excuses. Like I said last week. I got to go right into. I, I done made a couple of lists. The last couple of weeks. In regards to uh, the top five. So this week I got my top five. Coach of the year candidates right now. So go right into the top five. Number five. I give some credit to Mike Malone. Coach of the Denver Nuggets right now. They're number three. I'm sorry number four. Out west right now. They have potentially the MVP. And Jokic. Nikola Jokic right now. Uh, they don't have Jamal Murray because he went down with the ACL, but they're still playing some good ball right now. MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. I did talked about him last week in my most improved. This, this young brother, I mean, I was looking at him the other night against Brooklyn. I mean, filling it up. The only thing I don't like about Michael Porter Jr.'s game is his inconsistency. He'll show up in one half and then he'll disappear in another half. 
You got to bring that same energy all four quarters, young brother. If you're going to have the Denver Nuggets be a contender in the West. Mike Malone, number five on my top five coach of the year list. All right. Number four. Number four. Got to give some credit to Quinn Snyder of the Utah Jazz. All right. Utah took a L to these same Denver Nuggets last season after being up 3-1. But this season, they came back with a whole lot of vengeance in their heart to try to get back to the top. And right now, they're sitting pretty at the top of the Western Conference right now. Number one C, Gobert, Mitchell, Bogdanovich, Conley, the whole crew. I mean, they're shooting a three on another level this season. They brung in Jordan Clarkson. He could potentially be the sixth man of the year, along with Bogdanovich and Joe Ingles as well. Yo, Quinn Snyder they did a phenomenal job getting this team right mentally after having a debilitating loss in the bubble last season. Quinn Snyder, number four on my coach of the year candidates, all right? Number three, I got Coach Tom Thibodeau of the New York Knicks. He has resurrected the New York Knickerbockers. They're now number four in the Eastern Conference right now. They're looking like they're going to have home court advantage in the playoffs. The playoffs for the Knicks? You got to be kidding me. Coach Tibbs got Julius Randle as an all-star. I, I, I think, in my book, he's the leading candidate for most improved player of the year. And listen, I got to give a special shout-out today to Derrick Rose. He had a phenomenal performance today against uh, a virtuoso performance against the Los Angeles Clippers today off the bench with 27 points, putting in work. He could not miss. And listen, this was the same brother that went down with countless injuries over and over and over again. But to see him adjust and regroup, yo, I got to give a special shout out to Derrick Rose. So Coach Tom Thibodeau, number three. On my coach of the year candidates. Number two. Number two. Yo, this could go either or. This could go either way for me. But listen, I gotta give, I gotta give the number two nine to Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers, coach of the number one C in the East, Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, with Doc Rivers under uh under the fold, the Philadelphia 76ers. Look like a completely different squad. Joel MB is a totally different animal this season with Doc Rivers as his coach. I mean, between him and Jokic, you can go either or. Either way you slice it, you wouldn't be really wrong. But with Doc in his ear, in the control panel of his mind, Joel MB is the MVP candidate that we all thought he had the potential of becoming. And the Philadelphia 76ers are riding high at number one in the Eastern Conference. We got to see how they put it all together come playoff time. But Doc Rivers, number two, on my Coach of the Year candidates. Number one, Monty Williams, coach of the Phoenix Suns. And, man, listen, Monty has had to go through a lot over the last couple of seasons. You know, he lost his wife a couple of years back. And, you know, bringing in a guy, a consummate pro, a consummate leader, floor general point God in some some categories and Chris Paul to bring leadership to a young squad that has Devin Booker and has DeAndre Ayton and has a Mikael Bridges listen Phoenix has risen from the ashes of obscurity in the past and now they're a true contender in the Western Conference all on the leadership of Monty Williams. So, number one, my coach of the year right now is Monty Williams of the Phoenix Suns. So, listen, y'all. That's my top five list. What say you? Please, 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 please leave your voice clips in the comments and I'll be sure to have it and listen to it on the other side of next week, all right? Got to talk about some breakout guys that can make a breakout performance in this playoffs for uh, a lot of teams out east and out west. Listen, out east, I'm looking forward to Julius Randle's play in the playoffs. I'm looking forward.